on health, which is the cop out. I'm not letting you answer health. <laughs> Where do the Avs need to find consistency in the second half to chase these teams down? I think it's really. I think I think it's really important that they continue to get the goaltending they've gotten. Okay. Because if they can if they can regularly keep it to two goals a game, you're in every game. three, baby. Yeah. Yeah. You're in every game. Now, yep. you know, there will be there will be five, four games, you know, stuff like that's gonna happen sometimes. But if they can continue to get the top five caliber of goal team wide goaltending from both guys, this isn't on this isn't on Georgiev and it's not on Francois, it's on both. Um, if they can continue to one be healthy at that position, because I mean, you, you say I can't have health, but if Georgiev gets hurt or if Francois gets hurt, it's a lot tougher. Because you, even with even if even if Frankie gets hurt, you're not looking at Georgiev and going, "Hey, all these Sega Babas that we have, <laughs> go play all of them." Yeah, you know, you need you you need the help there. Um, you need you, you need to continue to have those guys available to you, but I I still think that the goaltending has been the backbone of all of their success through all the injuries, through all of the the power play is amazing. The power play sucks. The power play is functional. You know, between all the special teams roller coaster that they've that they've been on this year, which really hasn't been too abnormal. Uh, it's been a little extreme at times, but we know why. Yeah, uh, but and like those units ride the roller coaster every year, so it is what it is. But through all of that, and through all of the lineup changes and all the everything, you've had two guys back there predominantly uh, just doing a really good job, night in and night out. More often than not, those guys have killed it for you. And you're talking about with Georgiev, <clears throat> you're talking about a guy that is. <clears throat> Not just entrenching himself as a starter, but maybe an upper half starter as well. And not like creeping towards of... top 10. Yeah, exactly. Creeping into that top 10, a good, strong finish might actually get him into that conversation. Um, and so I think I think that's been the backbone of your team all year. Continue to get that because if your goal, if your goaltending goes sideways right now, everything else gets harder. It's already going to be hard, but you you are getting. We you mentioned it earlier. This is more or less be as healthy as they've been all season. Uh, when they come back, we you know Evan is at the rink posting videos of of the guys Iron skating and, and going hard. Yeah, yeah, doing their thing. Those guys all look good. They all look ready. If Nachushkin, Byram, and Manson are in your lineup in Pittsburgh for your first game back, you feel like you have a lot better chance at making some things happen. Definitely. And that, you know, that's a 34 games. If you can get 34 games where your lineup is more or less what you want your lineup to be, you know, there are going to be things that happen. Guys are going to get hurt. Guys are going to miss time, whatever. But well, you're not missing half your top six, a, a third of your decor. You exactly. Know, things like that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So um, I think I think it, it's with the goaltending and as they as the team really still looks for its identity uh, and it starts to try and figure out this whole third period thing, um, you know, closing games and, and just being a little better defensively, being a little more consistent throughout the games instead of the, we're going to score three goals in five minutes. And we're not going to score the rest of the game. Uh, and we will spend the entire third period defending. They need to smooth these bumps out, but all of it all of it is easier you can you can get away with some of this if your goaltending continues to do what it does